thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name is Milan Lazic. My partner and co-founder is uh, Jill Fraser. That's where we get the name, Jill Milan. Really inventive. I'm sure you couldn't have figured that out and I've not pointed it out to you. Uh, good. A little background on the company. We launched last year we, uh, with our line of luxury handbags. We're a uh, handbag company. Our bags are uh, made in Italy. Uh, we are manufactured by a company that is in, a, in its third generation of uh, manufacturing handbags and other fashion accessories for uh, most of Europe's biggest names in luxury fashion. We were very fortunate to hook up with this company. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, we are also very fortunate to have a very talented designer, Maya Stewart, educated at London College of Fashion. Uh, you can see where she's worked some very high-end uh, brands, Judith Lieber, Matthew Williamson, CC Sky. She's won a number of awards, including the Jimmy Choo Award. Uh, throughout the, this is one of our bags. This is the Kensington Clutch. Uh, I don't know if we brought a sample of that one here. But we didn't bring that one, but <clears throat> anyway, we have some photographs of that one. Now, just a little history on how we came to start this brand and where, what our positioning is. Uh, it, was, it really started because Jill was unable to find the kind of high quality luxury handbags that she wanted to carry that were not made of leather or other animal derived products. I know Michelle, you love leather. <laughs> uh, but because Jill, who's very active in animal welfare causes uh, and is vegan herself, preferred not to wear leather, she said, I think there's a market for this. And there seems to be a growing trend uh, away from wearing leather. Uh, there are more and more people are becoming vegetarian and or vegan. So this was a market we decided wasn't fully served, and that's really what we're what we're focused on. A little bit more about uh, our products. Uh, the materials are all sourced in Italy. They are they are all non-animal derived. <coughs> um, some of them are almost indistinguishable from indistinguishable from leather. If I show you them, and we have some here today, and I hadn't told you they weren't leather, you probably wouldn't have figured it out. <clears throat> but we also make them out of ultra suede, uh, and velvets, and some other materials. Uh, metal work is a big part of certain of the styles. It's all handmade. And we are one of the few handbag lines that can say, made in Italy. Made in Italy is a very high bar to reach. And you'd be surprised, and I won't name names, but there are a lot of brands that say, uh, made in Italy, that are really only partially made in Italy, or they're certainly not 100% made in Italy. All our products are made in Italy, all the materials are sourced in Italy. Next slide, please. Just a few pictures. It's hard to see in this slide, but we have some samples of the bags here. These are from the Fall 12 line, so this is, we'll be announcing this in the next few months. Uh, far left, the Soho Carry All, which is actually this bag, isn't it? <coughs> Wow. Uh, do we have the Pacific Heights clutch? Oh, all right. I'll just show you a couple of the bags that aren't. This is this is the uh, this is a portfolio. Uh, we really like this design. We think this is going to be a very popular item. This is available in a number of configurations. Uh, faux patent. Uh, faux leather combinations like this with the faux patent and the ultra suede. And uh, this is a this is the new Canaan clutch. It's another it's something of an entry level product for the Jill Milan line. Let me just show you one. Show one more. Let me show this one. This is a this is a faux patent leather. This is the uh, Knob Hill evening bag. It's got a uh, chain as well, and, uh, and so it can be carried as essentially as a clutch or over the shoulder. Uh, next slide, please. So, uh, conversation earlier was talk talking about the celebrity angle in, in fashion. We've been very fortunate. We've uh, been able to place uh, Jill Milan products with a number of uh, celebrities. This is a partial list. Uh, you can see you've got a lot of household names of the entertainment world here. Um, Beth Bears, who's on a show new this season on CBS. Uh, Bo Derek, Jane Fonda. We got a bit back to her very recently. She very receptive, really liked it. 
a little farther, Eva Longoria, I think we just got her the bag last week, but she's taking it with her to the Cannes Film Festival. So we've been very fortunate in uh, getting it into Hollywood. Next slide, please. There's Minnie Driver, Fiona Gubelman, who's actually a, a, become a friend of ours. She's on a television show, Wilfred on the FX channel. There she is carrying our bag at a, uh, an award ceremony where she presented last month. Here, Terry Pola, who's been on television, West Wing, the Beat the Parents films. Terry's the one on the right holding the bag as well as her co-star. So uh, anyway, a lot of celebrities. We've been very fortunate penetrating Hollywood. Uh, in terms of PR, print, we are in the April issue of W, their uh, most wanted feature. This is the cover, this is the page, and we've blown it up so you can't quite read it. But anyway, if you get the April issue and go to page 46, we're there. <laughs> uh, and then, next slide, please. And then just this week, uh, we were on an episode of Gossip Girl, and that's Elizabeth Hurley on the left. She's actually carrying uh, this bag. Uh, this is the green faux patent. There it is in the camel faux patent. And we're, we will also be on uh, 90210 next week. So we've got some momentum going in terms of television placement. So, uh, is everything going well? No? <laughs> this is one of my favorite quotes. Uh, I, I, was, I took some solace a week or so ago when I heard Oprah Winfrey saying about starting her network, about all the difficulties she's had, and how it hasn't gone perfectly smoothly. And I think anyone who's started a company, and many people in this room, can identify with that. And certainly that's been the case with us. There's a lot of things that haven't gone smoothly. We've, we've found the key is to identify things that are not working the way you want it and change it right away. They usually don't get better. If you have a feeling that it's not working well, change course. Do something different because it's probably not going to improve. Now, uh, Owen had asked me ad that we address a few specific questions. Uh, steps to creating a brand and what are the challenges? Um, jump in here, but I think it starts with really identifying who are you selling to? Uh, what market niche are you uh, appealing to? Do we have a sample of that one here? Oh, we don't. Okay. We actually do a lot of celebrities. We do a lot of bespoke clutches. Um, Lisa Michelle Boyd works very closely with us, who's Charlize Theron's stylist, who has styled many people. So we do a lot of sort of bags that we sell in very limited quantities, and we really can't make them for a person. Within the, uh, within the market we're trying to appeal, we're very sensitive, we're, we're very conscious, let me put it that way, of the price range. And when we look at the bags that we believe we're competing against, we're very competitive price-wise, and that's Gucci, that's Prada. And if you look at one of our bags and a comparable bag from another, from another line, we're very competitive price-wise. We're very sensitive to that. To your second question about a men's line, yes, we're working on that. Every, every bag we have right now is for uh, women. But right now, finally, uh, we have a design for a, a product that I can carry. And that's going to be our, our first man bag. And I'm really excited about it because I've been talking with Maya and I'm saying, well, I'd really like if it had a pocket for this and if it closed this way. And, uh, and, she, and her husband is giving her the same kind of input. So I'm uh, very excited about finally having, finally having a product that I can carry around and, and uh, show off because Jill's been having all the fun. Oh, sorry. Um, talk briefly about your initial funding and if you had to access markets for funding and if you did, was non-animal derived a significant factor of success in getting the funding? That's a good question. Actually for us, we've, we've funded it to date ourselves okay. and we haven't had to go out seeking funding. I actually don't know what the reaction would be to that. I think, it, I think, I have no reason to think it wouldn't be positive because we think that there is in the fashion world, there's a range of interests. I mean, there are many brands that tout their leather quality, and then there's, we think there are consumers who don't look for that. So I think that as long as it's a viable market, funding is, funding is possible. I think there's a lot of funding, and also the EU has a lot of funding, too. Correct. So Owen, uh, we can take a few more questions or just break, and they, they will conduct a gifting suite, typically in conjunction with an award ceremony or some other event. So with with the Emmys, with the Oscars, with the film festival. And we, uh, for the first time, participated in one last September, the week leading up to the Emmys. Uh, they, the
the organizers had arranged for a number of celebrities to come in, and these were typically nominees or, or people or past winners of the Emmys. Uh, so that's we met a number that way. That's how we met Fiona Goodwin, for instance, who had just wrapped her first season on Wilfred and is now in the second season. She's done a few movies. Uh, so that was some of our initial entrees. Uh, following that, we are working with a, a PR firm in Los Angeles that has uh, gotten us entrees to people like Jane Fonda and Eva Lagoria, and has gotten us the television placements that I mentioned, Gossip Girl and 90219. <clears throat> it's a gradual process. There's no sure thing. Uh, typically, you work through a, a celebrity's stylist or a publicist. Uh, at some point, you'll get a product to them. They'll either like it or they won't. And, uh, it's a bit hit or miss, and, it, and, there's, and there's no one way of doing it. And so that's why I've told you two or three different things that we've tried. Some work better than others. The requirements with me um, told us the minimums, um, worked with us on financing, and on um, putting in some consultants, which, which helped us quite a bit in our early stages. Um, for product, we really, Maya's a wonderful designer, but to get it to where we wanted it to be, we then spoke with Lisa Michelle Boyd in terms of fabrics and colors and that sort of thing because she's seeing obviously everything before it comes out and her own clients are so picky that uh, we just really wanted to up our game as much as we could and uh, she of course is also very supportive of our designer who's Native American and uh, has a very interesting